Hi, it's Lindsay at Close Call Sports. We were asked to take a look at this interference play in Toronto. To set the stage, it's one out, 3-2 count, and runners at the corners. Biggio running. Swing and a miss by Springer. No throw because they don't want to risk Espinal coming home. So two down as Biggio steals second. And now... Have they called interference on Springer, which means Biggio is going to be out at second and the inning is over. The call from the home plate umpire Shane Livensparker is that Springer interfered with Vogt's ability to throw the ball. Several rules myths to address up front. First, this is not a question of batter interference or not, but it is a question of retired batter runner interference. The relevant rule is 601A5. Remember, it's a 3-2 count, so when Springer swings and misses, that's strike three. Because first base is occupied with less than two out at the time of the pitch, it does not matter if the pitch was in the dirt or not. It's strike three, you're out. The reason I bring that part up is that Springer would be legally allowed to run to first base and therefore step in front of home plate had it been a drop third strike situation with first base unoccupied or their two outs at the time of the pitch. Because it is first base occupied with less than two out, you can't step in front of home plate and interfere with the catcher's ability to throw. Myth number two, there does not actually have to be contact for it to be interference. And similarly, the existence of contact does not automatically mean that there was interference. This is a holistic look at the play. Was there hindrance? Was there impotence? If that answer is yes, that is the definition of interference. Contact could help guide you get there, but it is not the be all end all. You can have interference with zero contact. And third, the catcher does not have to physically release or throw the ball for an interference call to be made. If the umpire judges that the batter, runner, or retired player's hindrance prevented the catcher from physically throwing the ball, that is sufficient for interference to be called. In review, we do not have to actually have contact, but it could help. And we don't actually have to have a throw, but it also could help. Now, let's talk about the play itself. Swing and a miss by Springer, no throw. I wager the vast majority of umpires seeing this play in real time will call interference because the retired batter clearly steps out of the box, even with home plate, and the catcher motions like he is going to throw. Thus, in real time, at 100% speed, it sure looks as if the retired batter has impeded the catcher. Dead ball runners out for retired batter's interference. Add it to the strikeout and you have an inning-ending double play. That's the real-time 100% speed look, one shot from behind home plate looking out. Now, let's look from the center field cam in slow motion. Wow. Wouldn't it be great if we all had multiple angles, slow-mo, multiple replays? So, the pitch is swung on and missed. The batter at this point is out on strike three. The batter clearly steps out of the box toward home plate, but does the catcher ever actually intend to throw the ball to second base? This is what the key criteria is for this play. If the catcher intended to throw to second, the batter retired batter clearly interfered with his ability to do so, and interference is the correct call in that case. If this was a set play by Oakland to fake to second and then throw or fake to third, this is not interference because the catcher was not prevented from throwing the ball because the catcher never intended to throw the ball. This is really tough stuff because as an umpire, you have to read minds. And if you're standing behind home plate and you already have a pretty bad angle at seeing the front side of the catcher, it's tough to tell. This is not reviewable. The crew can get together but usually will not. This is a call that needs to be made right away, one way or the other, at full speed, one shot. 99 times out of 100, it's probably interference. And if the batter or retired batter does something illegal, i.e. stepping out of the box, going to home plate, and getting in the catcher's way, perhaps, the benefit of the doubt always, 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 goes to the team that did not potentially break a rule, Therefore, the benefit of the doubt goes to the defense, and if the umpire is unsure, it is interference. Only if the umpire is 100% certain that that catcher was not going to throw the ball should this be called nothing, no interference.
in retrospect, it looked like the catcher was going to fake to second regardless of Springer's actions, but you can't tell that in real time from that angle. I understand the call. And if you don't, maybe you should try umpiring and see if you can make this call. Visit us online at CloseCallSports.com, Twitter and Facebook at CloseCallSports. Strap it on. We'll see you on the site. Bowden wasn't throwing it to begin with. No, he, was, he, he had he no was, intention. He was it. faking it. Yep. There was no, going to be no throw, but the Blue Jays will be done this inning. And unfortunately, they score another run, but boy, boy.